Welcome to another edition of 42 Straight Years In on my crackhead update. Guess who arrived on the scene this morning? The car date lady. I was going out to the car and I met her coming in the entrance. She grabbed me and hugged me. She said, baby, they had me in that call room at the Green Oaks. She said, man, I need some dick bad of the motherfucker. She said, man, all I did in that call room, she I just sit in there and masturbate all day. They give you a suicide blanket and you be buck naked. She said, every time one of them psychiatrists come over that little slot, look in there. She said, I had this damn thing working. She said, I had it working. It was popping like, like hot fish grease. She said, I need it bad. I said, yeah, you'll find it. She said, man, that youngster sold me that butter, man. That shit had me fucked up, man. I said, yeah, I seen you. I said, your hair was standing up like Don King. I said, you was buck naked and standing over there in Taco Bell parking lot. She said, oh, I know it, man. I was looking for it. I need it bad. I said, well, I got somebody later on I'm going to introduce you to. Okay, tell her up and go get it. Now, I'm not going to go over to Super Crip's apartment where he lived with that lady. If I happen to see him in the park, I'm going to bring him over and take him to her apartment. That might be a match made in hell. Because he's doing bad. This woman got money. She got a car. I don't know if Super Crip got driver's license, but she ain't going to be tripping about no driver's license. As long as you provide that thing thing, you good. That's my crackhead update. Y'all know what it is. Get your motherfucking shanks out. And let's get ready to ride. Yeah, a shout out to Diamond Stone TV. Uh, Y'all go over there and check me out on Diamond Stone and check him out. He got some good, good shit on his channel. And I got a speaking engagement Thursday. A paid speaking engagement. Your boy moving on up in the world. Uh, Y'all had someone in the comment section ask me about the guy I met in prison with the most homicides. That would be a guy named uh, Red Devil. He lives over in South Dallas right now. He served 38 years. He test Also, he testified in the Ruiz versus Estelle lawsuit, and they gave those people who testified an option. They can be transferred to a federal prison because their life will be in jeopardy in a Texas prison. So he elected to be transferred. He was released from on parole from uh, Leavenworth Federal Prison in, in Leavenworth, Kansas. Well, anyway, when he first came to prison, he was 17 years old. He had a life sentence. And uh, was assigned to the Ferguson unit. And those guys assaulted over assaulted him over there. SEX assaulted him. All through the years, he tracked them down. Different prisons. Because like back in the day, they only had 16 prisons. If you had a life sentence or you was a fuck up, it was limited on what prisons they was going to send you to. They were going to send you a prison to a prison that had the most violent inmate guards in the Texas prison system where they can deal with your ass. And also a violent ass warden. That's the type of prison you was going to go to. Well, anyway, he tracked those guys down all through the years. And he killed all five of them son of bitches. All five of them. And I've said this in previous videos. Back then, they wouldn't indict you. If they you did get indicted, whatever time you received, would be ran concurrent with your original sentence. They wasn't stacking the time. So he got indicted for three of them. And the time was ran concurrent with his life sentence. The other two, well, that was a free ride. The prison took care of that on an internal basis. But he, the, the guy that I know, got the most murders in the Texas prison. And occasionally, I go over to his, his house. His family died and left him some property in South Dallas. I go over there, me and him kick it. But uh, he, he had a saying in prison. He said, I can't fight, but I guarantee you, I'll kill your ass. I guarantee you, I'll do that. He said, you beat me up today, I'm going to kill your ass tomorrow. That's his policy. He's a real small dude. But he don't take no shit. Now, I give a guy credit like that. You can't 
you young, you inexperienced, you scared, you ain't got no buddies at that prison, it's kind of easy to get taken advantage of. Plus, it's the fear factor. You know, you confronted by five or six guys who've been locked up a long time. They're hella aggressive. I've seen a lot of guys fold. Well, those guys are kind of smart. They'll wait and see who you know. But you might have a brother there. Or your dad might be there. Your uncle, who got a lot of prison experience. They fuck with you. You When you see him, you tell him. Then he'll come fuck with them. So... Once they see you on your own, you don't got no prison experience. Uh, back in the day, it, it was a wrap for you. Because Texas prison then was a screaming. That's when it was real gangsters. You, you didn't have to talk shit about what you would do. You could actually go and do it. And the warden, the co it. He didn't give a fuck about no violence. And all he cared about is you take your ass to work. That's what they were worried about, was all that fucking field work. They wasn't giving a shit about no inmate uh, getting killed or getting hurt. They did not color inmates at all. They would tell you in a hurry, in a heartbeat, go go back down that cell block and get you a man. Get married. Hell, yeah, there's some of these old convicts to look out for you. They wouldn't babysit you at all. So you basically was on your own. And it wasn't no outside agencies like it is now uh, fighting for inmate rights. Texas inmates was on their motherfucking own. These people had that violent system going for over 100 fucking years, and they ain't had no plans on slowing down. They've been getting away with murder forever, and they didn't give a shit about no inmate at all. As long as they fed you three meals a day, provided you a cell to sleep in, some clean sheets, and you took your ass to work, you was on your own after that. They didn't give a fuck. There was no safe prison. A lot of these old guys... On these prison channel hell, they went to prison when it's a safe prison act. They got that rat up on the wall. Now, hell, you, man, if a warden hear about an inmate being assaulted and raped, man, he'll lock that whole fucking cell block down. They will lock the whole cell. They'll lock the whole prison down if it's necessary. And they're going to get immediately to the bottom of that problem. So you can't compare the, pro, the modern prison with the old prison. They different as night as day. And uh, I met a guy in uh, in Texas, and they had said they got a thing called chunking in Texas. C-H-U-N-K-I-N-G, chunking. And those are professional shit throwers. The shit is so bad back in Ad said they had large shampoo bottles, and lotion bottles, they stopped selling those to people in ANC. They sell them real small. And they make a squirt bottle out of that uh, shampoo bottle and squirt shit and piss and sour milk all over the guards or squirt, squirt it over other inmates. Well, I met this guy. We called him Dookie Chunkin' Ray. He's a shit-throwing son of a bitch here. He have a whole cell blocking chick with that goddamn shit throwing. He take that shit, shit in them milk cartons, Mix it with that side of milk. You can tell when he's testing it. He opened one of them can uh, containers of shit up. Man, you be you could smell that all over the cell block. He just testing it. He ain't throwing it yet. I'm talking about this shit smell bad as hell. And he didn't give a goddamn who he throw it on. Because he know he didn't go to wreck. Because an ad said, especially at Cofield, you can climb that fence in the wreck yard. Those guards will lie you. About five minutes to climb that fence and do whatever the hell you need to do. So his coward ass wouldn't go to wreck. He'd just go to shower. Sometimes when he go to shower, dude be trying to throw hot water on his punk ass, trying to get rid of him. Well, anyway, on commissary day, he would make him a line, a, a, a fishing line. What that is in, in Ad said, that's a long piece of thread out of your underwear or a sheet, and you tie a weight on the end of it, and you throw it. Underneath your cell, these guys are good with this shit. It's called fishing. And he fish in all the commissary bags from people who made commissary. Your name and your cell number is wrote on that bag. So he'll look at that bag and call out your number. Hey, 12 cell, send me some coffee down here. Oh, bitch ass redhead motherfucker, I ain't got no coffee. He'll say, all right, I got a package coming for you, special delivery later on. 
And all of a sudden, you hear him kick his tray slide on. Boom! There that shit go. Boy, I'm talking about fuck up the whole cell block. This shit take your breath away. And uh, one day I was, uh, dude was telling, dude was talking shit to him. Man, that motherfucker throw the shit turd just like a goddamn spirit. He just stuck up on side of the wall. I'm talking about about a 14 inch shit turd. By, I'm talking this motherfucker must ain't shit in about three weeks. That motherfucker just hit the wall, boing, 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 just bribe breaking a big old hunk of shit. I said, boy, this is a bad son of a bitch here. And, uh, once we had a warden in Cofield named Woods, Warden Leslie Woods. So he making his rounds, going to every inmate cell, asking, hey, how you doing? He got the Dukey Red cell. Dukey Red hit him with that motherfucking shit. Boy, that boy, I felt sorry for that goddamn warden. I ain't never seen a man just standing there and crap. He just kept shitting him down. He didn't just hit him one time. Boy, I'm talking about he fucked him up. And boy, I was there saying, you sorry, motherfucker, I'm going to put you in super sex. And Kofi only didn't have regular administrative segregation. They had a super sex at uh, Kofi. When they couldn't handle you nowhere in Texas sex, they would place you in that super sex, where it's way stricter than administrative segregation. And uh, one day he shitted a nurse down. That's why Texas got a law passed where that's a third degree felony. Chunking is. You carry two to ten. But you're going to get more than ten because the crime you're in prison for is going to be used to enhance the chunking indictment. That's going to boost it up to second degree. And if you've been to prison twice, now you got a first degree felony. Five to ninety nine or life, so it's a lot of dudes back in Ed said went in that motherfucker with a ten year sentence. Now they got ninety five motherfucking years, catching all them fucking cases back then. Ed said, and Duke of Red, one of the baddest motherfuckers I met. This man had martial law. He get him some coffee. He get him some Roman noodle soups. He get him all that. If you don't, he been fuck that whole cell block up. About this a shit. Guards don't even want to fuck with him because he's gonna shit their ass down. He don't give a damn about no guards. And he didn't hit some that only had an eight-year sentence. He ended up with a motherfucking life goddamn sentence. Aggravate behind his shit throwing endeavors. Well, I, I done seen a lot of guys. To me, Ed Sig wasn't that damn hard. Some guys just couldn't handle being in that cell by themselves. That didn't bother me. I always, I got the Wall Street Journal, Sport News, Dallas Morning News, Ebony Jet, National Geographic, Scientific America. I had all types of publication coming in every day. I get some publication. So my mother still was alive. She gonna keep me with plenty of books. So this shit didn't bother me at all. When I ain't got just get bored, I go find some of my old paperwork and sit over there at the desk and retype the shit. I always kept me something to do. And I never miss recreation. I always go to my wreck so I can work some of that stress off of me, come in and take me a shower, then crash out. But some people cannot handle administrative segregation. Uh, this is my video for today. Y'all keep your motherfucking shanks ready. Cause they don't get no checks around here until Friday. And these motherfuckers are super broke. Friday come around, you ain't gonna see none of them. They all gonna be disappeared. You ain't gonna see nobody. And stay ready to ride. Uh, support me over on Patreon. I know I'm not uploading that much stuff on Patreon because I'm working on a, a audio book, and it's so damn time consuming. Uh, Y'all like and subscribe, and I thank you for watching. Yeah, before I leave, uh, shout out to uh, the big old and little Tommy over in the stiff cliff. I'll be over that way eventually, fellas. Y'all have a nice day. Thank you for watching.